Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be chatting about 2020 releases. The ones I own, the ones that I need to read before the end of the year. That's it, that's what we're doing. I feel like 2020, despite everything that's happened, has been a pretty incredible year for book releases. So we've come up against a bit of a situation I have got a crap ton of 2020 releases, several of which have been hyped all year long, and 2020 is almost over. And it's not that I feel as though I need to read a book in the year that it's out. I just feel like it's nice to start 2021 knowing that you don't have, how many books are here? Like 30 books from the previous year that are still waiting to be read. In this video, I'm gonna prioritize, say the 15 books that I wanna try to get through in December and they will all be 2020 releases. I'm going to dedicate December just to reading books that were released in 2020. I'm only focusing on my physical TBR because something hits different about the books that are on your shelves staring at you like, why aren't you reading me? You know what I'm saying? A lot of these I did not purchase new. Of the ones that I purchased new, I think almost all of them were from one of my local independent bookstores. Several I received as gifts. I got quite a few of them secondhand, surprisingly. A couple from the little free libraries near me. Super long introduction, but without further ado, Let's chat about the 2020 books on my shelf. Let's figure out what I'm gonna be reading for the rest of 2020. First up, we've got Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I had really wanted to read this in October because it is kind of a paranormal romance. It's about a young trans boy from a Latinx family who is not being affirming of his gender, so he summons a ghost to try to help him. That's what I know about this book, but I've heard nothing but rave reviews about this. I'm so excited to read it. This is a non-negotiable for me before the year is out. I'm gonna start making a pile right now of the ones that I definitely need to read in 2020 versus the ones that I feel okay about putting off. Next, we've got Pizza Girl by Jean Kuhn Frazier. I did get this in one of my little free libraries and I picked it up just because the cover looked so fun. It doesn't have great reviews. I think it's just kind of a chaotic book about a pizza delivery girl, a grieving, aimless teen on the cusp of terrifying responsibility. I don't know, just kind of looks like a quirky book. This one I feel like isn't a top priority, but it's really short. I'll put that in my maybe pile. The Magic Fish by Trung Lee Nguyen. This book I got in the Rainbow Crate box for October. It is a graphic novel about a young boy whose parents immigrated to the US. He's trying to come out to them and is trying to do so through fairy tales. And because it's a graphic novel, I feel like I can get it in. Next, we have The Brilliant Life of Eudora Honeyset by Annie Lyons. And it is about an 85 year old woman who has decided she's done and she's seeking out assisted suicide in Switzerland because I believe it is illegal in the US. She meets a couple people before the procedure is supposed to take place and I believe begins to question it as she's reflecting on these new friendships and reflecting on her life. Not that I don't like when books make me cry, but I know that this is going to make me cry in a certain way and I don't know if I ready to cry in that way. So I might end up lending it to my mom before I read it. Anyways, I'll put it in my maybe pile. Next we have Punching the Air by E.B. Zaboy and Yusuf Salam. It's a novel told in verse. I've read a couple books in verse this year that I really enjoyed. The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, also The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. I really loved both of those books, so I'm really excited about this. Oh yeah, I gotta read this this year. It's a 16 year old who is convicted of a crime that he didn't commit and is sent to prison and is telling his story through poetry. Yusuf Salam was wrongly convicted when he was 15 years old and is now one of the exonerated five and is now a prison reform activist. This is supposed to be incredible. I think it's a must read in 2020. Next we've got Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. This is a romance about people. I think it has something to do with cheese. I think that their parents both own like cheese factories. This is the worst synopsis ever. Clearly, I don't know a lot about this book, but part of the reason why I'm thinking about this is because I don't think I have a lot of romances or I don't know if I have any other romances in this pile and can I get through the rest of 2020 without another romance? I don't know, but I guess Cemetery Boys is a paranormal romance. 
it's a maybe. We have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. It is about a woman who finds a library where the books in the library tell her what her life would have been like if she had lived it differently. My dear friend Kendall got me this for my birthday. I think that I would like to try to read this before the end of the year. Although it also seems like something that's gonna make me cry. Next we've got One by One by Ruth Ware, which I was pleasantly shocked to see in my little free library. This is Ruth Ware's newest book, which is a thriller about a bunch of people who are stuck in a cabin together in the winter and murders start happening. It's been getting really mixed reviews. Some people love it. Some people say it's really predictable. Some people say that it's both predictable, but that they still love it. I have two other Ruth Ware books that I need to and want to read, The Turn of the Key and The Death of Mrs. Westaway. But I also feel quite confident that I'm going to like those ones better than this one. So I'm wondering if I should start with this one and then know that I'll only go up from there. You know what I mean? And again, I don't know if I have many other thrillers in this pile. I'm gonna put in the maybe. I'm gonna put it in the maybe. Oh, then we've got Ties That Tether by Jane Agaro, which is a contemporary romance about a Nigerian woman who immigrates to Canada and falls in love with a white man and is navigating identity and love and all of these different things. That's pretty much what I know, but the cover is really beautiful. I am intrigued by the fact that it takes place in Canada and it's a romance. Between this and Tweet Cute, it's gonna be this. So I'm gonna put it in the yes pile. Then we have Creatures by Chrissy Van Meter. I have no idea what this book is about. The cover is gorgeous. A dead whale, a groom, love and abandonment. This isn't a synopsis at all. This is just words. I got this book what I now realize is a pyramid scheme. You know those things that go right on social media that are like, book swap, post this and get up to 36 books. I did that earlier this year because we're in a pandemic and I was bored and I did get several books. I didn't get 36 books, but I got quite a few. And this was one of the books that I got from somebody. I want to read it eventually in the stack of 2020 releases that I have. I don't think it's my priority, but I'm excited to read it one day because I love the idea of somebody having sent this to me as their favorite book. Next, we've got You Brought Me the Ocean by Alex Sanchez and Julie Moreau. I know that it is a graphic novel centered around grief that is also classified as LGBTQ+, so I would like to read it. It's pretty short. I will put this in my pile to read this year because I think I can do it. Oh, I don't know if the title is Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood. I think the title is House of Earth and Blood and the series is Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. I got this book from that book pyramid too and was terrified when I got this book. This is an almost 800 page book which scares the crap out of me and it's like adult fantasy which also scares me. I know that people love this book. I've never read anything by Sarah J Maas. I feel like this was a really generous gift to send to somebody. It's like a big adult fantasy hardcover book. I'm really excited to read it. I don't think it's going to be this year. Sarah J Maas is young adult fantasy. I would like to read first because I feel like it will build me up to this. Like I don't know if I'm at a place with fantasy yet where I can commit to something this chunky. I wish I could tell you more, but I can't. This is gonna be a 2021 Chloe read. I'm excited about it. It's not happening yet. Me and White Supremacy by Layla F. Saad. This is more of like a workbook or guidebook, I guess. You are intended to read one chapter a day for 28 days, and then there are a series of journaling prompts in each chapter focuses on interrogating and unpicking white supremacy inside yourself as a white person. So it's intended for white folks or white passing folks to read and do the internal work. And it's a pretty short little book, but it packs a real punch. I think I'm about halfway through. So I'm hoping that I can finish this before 2020. Next is It Sounded Better In My Head by Nina Kenwood. What is this book about, you may ask? I have no idea. But what is it about? It's a coming of age romance book. I don't know if I can do it. Have I had the best luck with YA romances lately? No. Becky Albertalli blurbed it though. That's promising. Where did I get this? This is the worst synopsis in the world. Have you read this book? 
Do you know anything about this book? It's a mystery to me. It looks like a girl is third wheeling her friends, is kind of sad about it, then accepts an invitation to a party and sees a different side to someone she thought she knew. This gives me basically no information. I'll put it in the maybe, because what I can do is I can get through all my yeses and then I can look at the maybes and then go from there if I finish all the yeses ideas. Then we have Missing from the Village by Justin Lang, the story of serial killer Bruce MacArthur, the search for justice, and the system that failed Toronto's queer community. I want to say it's classified as true crime, written by a journalist about a series of murders that happened in the gay village in Toronto in early 2013 and that were only solved in 2019 and were viewed as not having received adequate attention because the folks that were killed by the serial killer were queer men of color. I don't read a lot of true crime. I think something like this that kind of has a justice element underpinning it where it's an investigative journalist who's I think trying to do right by a community that was really wronged in this case. I don't know if I will enjoy it because I don't think that this is a feel-good story by any means but I'm looking forward to it and think it's going to be really good and I'm gonna try to get to it in 2020. Next is Little Universes by Heather Demetrios. Two sisters' parents pass away in a tsunami when they're visiting Malaysia. I know it's gonna be sad. While I am excited to read it, I don't think it's gonna be this year. I'm trying to be realistic here. Next we have Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. This is a non-negotiable. I'm reading this before the end of the year. Look at how beautiful. Felix Ever After tells a story about a young, black, queer, trans boy who is having a rough go as it is, then starts receiving transphobic messages from another student and then is publicly dead named and decides that he is going to try to enact some sort of revenge on the folks who are doing this to him. I have, again, only heard excellent things about this book. I have been excited to read it since I got it and just haven't had the chance. Oh God. So it is going into my ever growing yes pile. Next we have My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, another one that I was lucky to find in one of my little free libraries. Very dark and I think quite harrowing story about sexual abuse between a teacher and a student. I don't know much more. How's my pile looking? I'm gonna put this in like a solid maybe. I want to read it, but again, I feel like I'm not drawn towards books that I know are gonna make me upset. Next we have Exciting Times by an author who I would like to say is named Nisha Dolan. Nisha, right? Is that correct? We are looking at how to pronounce this important character of the Irish mythology, Nisha. Yes! Nisha. This book has a cute cover and I got it also in my little free library. Oh, I'd heard this compared to Sally Rooney, which isn't a super compelling case to me, but the synopsis is making it appear more interesting than Sally Rooney. An intimate, bracingly intelligent debut novel about a millennial Irish expat who becomes entangled in a love triangle with a male banker and a female lawyer. I am intrigued. Oh my God, I get it now because it has three toothbrushes and it's a love triangle, so like three toothbrushes. We're gonna pop it in the maybe pile. We're almost done. We have The Girl with a Loud Voice by Abby Dare. This is a debut novel about a young 14 year old Nigerian girl who is sold into a marriage with an older man and it's her struggling with that and trying to find her voice. And I think it's gonna be a 2021, like one I read in 2020, not one I read in 2021. <laughs> this is Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore which I think is kind of like a Freaky Friday 13 going on 30 situation. A 19 year old who wakes up in her 51 year old body and then continues to like leap through ages in her own body is not like top of my list. I don't feel super bad about pushing this off until next year but what you gonna do? Next we've got The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, another one that I was hoping to get to for Halloween and did recently read a Stephen Graham Jones book and didn't love it. Two Native American men who are struggling with an event from their youth and then end up in a struggle for their lives. I know that that's really vague, but that's all that I know. I know it's horror thriller. Is it horror or is it thriller? Hmm, do I know the difference? I'm gonna put this perhaps optimistically in my 2020 pile. Next is Sisters by Daisy Johnson. This one's really, really short. 
So I could theoretically probably get through it this year, but I'm not feeling super drawn to it. Two sisters and their mother moves them across the country. And then I think that kind of creepy things maybe happen. Maybe it's not creepy. It might be just like an emotional dark sister story. Oh, but Carmen Maria Machado blurbed it and said it's gorgeously written and profoundly unsettling. I do like being unsettled. No, it's 2021, I can't. Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is about a girl who loves romance but has no real desire to be in a romantic relationship herself and is worried that she's destined to remain loveless, is exploring the labels of a romantic, of a sexual, trying to decide if those fit with her. And it's written by Alice Oseman, who also writes the Heartstopper series. So I'm sure it's gonna be great. I wanna read this book before February because I think I'm gonna like it and I'd love to be able to recommend people books with asexual or aromantic characters around a time of year that's very romance heavy. So I'm gonna put it on my list to read in December. Ah! Last, but uh, certainly not least, we've got The Finishing Half by Britt Bennett. Did you see it coming? Because I'm the only person in the world that hasn't read this book yet. The Vanishing Half is a book about two, I believe, biracial twins. As they become adults, one chooses to live her life presenting as a white woman and the other chooses to live her life presenting as a black woman. And it's kind of like a family drama exploring these sisters' lives. This book is supposed to be incredible. So it doesn't really feel like an option to read this before the end of the year. So it's going in the 2020 pile. Okay. Let me show you. So the ones I have decided to prioritize for the rest of the year are these ones. So these are the 13 books that I have said I'm gonna try to read in December as the 2020 releases I wanna get to before the end of the year. Oh my God. Oh my God. This was a pretty long video, but I feel like it helped me. So hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Let me know what your favorite 2020 releases are. If there are any that are still on your list to get to before the end of the year. And let me know about the books that you just saw me talk about. Are there ones that I've put in my December pile that I should maybe just be putting off until 2021? Are there some that are in my maybe or no piles that you think I absolutely need to get to before the year is out? This is a flexible TBR. I may be able to get to more than 13 books, but it does look fairly intimidating as a pile right now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next time.